Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm back uh, to uh, further continue in the interpretation and perhaps uh, sharing as much as I could uh, with regards to the uh, environmental quality clean air regulations uh, 2014. We are still in the middle of that law. However, it's going towards the end of that part of the clean air regulations now uh, as usual uh, please uh, uh, my warning again achtung uh, bitte könnten sie bitte nicht meine video in eine mosque gucken uh, ya maksudnya dalam bahasa melayu ni ya, janganlah bawa video saya especially when the khatib is uh, sedang membaca khutbah ni Tolong jangan bawa video saya ataupun melihat video saya watching my video in on Friday in the mosque when the khatib is already reciting the khutbah and also the rest of the conditions like other places of worship and also while you are having meeting with someone and while you're driving etc and uh, uh, other other important things that you're doing please keep my video put your laptop or handphone away and uh, continue with what you're doing now alhamdulillah thank you very much i for all the support yang you bagi saya especially uh, friends yang uh, subscribe to this channel say hagap is not only uh, subscribing to this channel but please give your comments please give your input your expertise I am not the expertise or a person who knows everything under the sky. I'm telling you, I am still learning from you. Most of it I'm learning from younger people. And uh, this old school old man is, uh, even though the way I work today, it's like I'm going to pass immediately after finishing this work. So knowing that I'm going to pass very soon, I'm going to give all out in my work. Therefore, the younger uh, predecessor who is going to take up this work are able to look into the history or background of the knowledge and do better. All right. So thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for your support. And I hope uh, for those who have not subscribed, please do so and give input. Be an active part of my community, of this network. It doesn't belong to me. It's just a channel which is created by YouTube. It's an amazing platform. And we all thank YouTube for their effort. All right. Now, I am going to proceed still <clears throat> we are still talking about environmental monitoring but this time I'm going to bring you into the other uh, type of monitoring which is another example of um, point source uh, monitoring whereby we are going to talk about uh, uh, it's not a periodic monitoring but in fact it is uh, it is about a continuous environmental monitoring effort i think you know about excuse me uh, what it's called there you are continuous emissions monitoring um yeah this is one example that i have before you this is uh, taken from a picture taken while i was doing an audit with this company this is uh, an amazing company uh i would say the top management has employed competent person uh, they have put a lot of uh, effort with regards to complying to all requirements of environmental law 
and apparently this company is subscribing to all the terms and conditions laid out under the EIA approval. I believe you know is what CIA, Environmental Impact Assessment approval, and uh, they are uh, putting a lot of effort. They have invested huge amount of capitals in uh, complying to the environmental requirement in this country and for that I have, uh, I have I have been saluting them all the while and they are very good uh, in their work and so what I have here is a sample of a picture taken from them I just want to show you this is the CEMS unit got it it is a scientific equipment it is electronic it is filled up with sensors it is uh, mechanized with high level precision engineering parts and yes it is sensitive um, so um, this is an equipment that they have got to purchase and installed uh, and at the at the moment i learned from them that they have incurred a substantial cost uh, not only for the installation uh, uh, but also they are spending consistently uh, as far as maintenance is concerned, they, they, they are associated with maintenance cost. Now, this factory is uh, prescribed under first schedule of the Clean Air Regulation. They are one of those companies uh, in the first schedule. Therefore, their emission standard is stipulated under third schedule and apparently in the standard for them in third schedule is a requirement for a continuous emission monitoring there you are they have installed it so um, this is uh, an equipment which is situated at about eight times if you look at this this is the best part of uh, uh, the best height that you can have when you want to install look at this all right for any stack look this is the height look now for you for your understanding this is a rule of thumb it is an uh, it, it is a mechanical engineering work i am not a mechanical engineering but i learned from them now let's assume this is the, ch the chimney diameter let's say the diameter let's abbreviate it as uh, say d okay is it all right for you right d now when when we have here when we want to determine how high would our sampling pot is this is called sampling excuse me for my writing i'm, I'm used to write on whiteboards but when i have to do this it takes me a bit of an effort sampling please excuse my handwriting pot i mean for those of you who are new in this work we will learn together okay and for those of you who are veteran already please correct me if i'm wrong now let's assume this is the sampling port roughly that we have not really identified now how to identify sampling port is by having let's assume this is the height okay 
let's take this as the height which is from this point up to this point all right this is the height and the best time to have sampling the best height to have the sampling pot is usually according to mechanical engineer usually from two and a half to eight times the diameter. That's the best height as far as the location of sampling pot is because the theory um, brought about by ingenious was the fact that when dust comes in from this part, actually see yeah, it's from below, that this is really actually the turbulence point, you know, these are all turbulence point. And as this dust partic particulates or any total or any particulate matters which could be organic which could be hydrocarbon which could be elements containing metals etc in the form of particulates including vapors as i was told as they go up as they go up into the chimney preferably with velocity uh, about meter per second this is considered a flux the efflux this is fluid dynamics I, I'm, I'm not an expert okay a flux velocity Look at my handwriting. I'm sorry about this. Hello, city. Okay. Uh, the best uh, uh, speed of flow of uh, all these particles through the stack in order to achieve a good uh, form of a more accurate form of uh, uh, sampling is when the particles are going through speed like eight meter per second and as they and as the higher they go it is around this area that they could have a, a kind of a good flow more uh, uh, uniform uh, which is termed by ingenious as the lamina flow. I'm sorry about this. I'll try to exercise my fingers from now on so that uh, I could get a better. <laughs> this is not handwriting anymore, it's finger writing. Now, lamina flow. Lamina flow is a state of uh, consistent, harmonious flow uh, without uh, any turbulence between particles. They don't knock one another. They are like a zamble in a unidirection, a good flow, and the distribution of particle in the flow is rather uniform. That is the point when, uh, according to uh, mechanical engineers uh, who major in fluid dynamics, uh, is the best point to have uh, our sampling port. Uh, not only for continuous uh, emission monitoring, uh, but also this is the same principle used in order for us to determine the sampling port in stacks for 
other uh, uh, monitoring uh, stack sampling, including the manual or periodic stack sampling that we've got to do. So the determination of the position in terms of height of the sampling port is uh, uh, the equation of uh, 2.5 to, to about 8 times the diameter. That's the height. So this is uh, what they have for me and uh, I have uh, uh, learned uh, and, and worked through the years with this principle, with this knowledge and uh, um, at the moment uh, there are no other argument that would rebut this uh, particular uh, theory uh, brought up by the fluid dynamics uh, engineers. Okay, so what else uh, would I have? Uh, okay. All right, that is some discussion uh, on uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, installation of the CEMS based on that uh, uh, principle. All right, so I think let's take a look what the law has got to say. Um, if you do have uh, comments, uh, a question or findings uh, that is worthy uh, 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 to communicate with uh, other people, please do not hesitate to uh, uh, what they call uh, type in the content of this uh, video. All right, we will share knowledge and uh, let's go on from here. Now, according to the law, Regulation 17, it says that there are certain factories or certain premises or certain activities which is required under the law to perform a continuous environmental monitoring and to install the system. And if you look at the third schedule and second schedule, which I have covered in earlier videos, you will see some of the standards in numerics which I have typed and written down are in red fonts. These red fonts uh, uh, signifies the fact that those parameters, those respective parameters associated with red fonts, standard numerics, are actually required by the law to uh, be measured by virtue of continuous and emission monitoring system. Therefore, those parameters do require continuous monitoring. All right, so what do we do then? According to the law, there you are, these are some of these premises. Okay, now what do we do then? Let's take a look at this part. What does it mean? Look. The, the DOE, yeah, the authority, uh, especially DOE, don't go to factories and recommend, don't go to all the factories and recommend what device or what manufacturer, what make should we use. It is our luxury of discretion to determine uh, in our own accord uh, to to invite uh, various uh, 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 consultants or fabricators or suppliers uh, to install CEMS uh, at our stack. We have the liberty to choose. Now, once we have chosen, what we do is that we need to get all the technical information with regards to that particular instrument, engineering drawings, uh, engineering drawings of the instrumentation, the mechanism, uh, the description, uh, the you know principle of operation, etc., which is needed to be informed, which is a technical information adequate enough for DOE. Now, uh, we need to assemble all this, all this information and what we do is we submit uh, a notification to install CEMS uh, at our stack. We got to inform them how many stacks, which stack by numbering those stacks, okay? And then 
the when the deal is satisfied but before that as we have notified we have 30 days to install those equipment all right and when the do once we have installed after completion of our commissioning process the doe uh, would come over to uh, validate our installation and the process goes on until it is connected all right and uh, start to have uh, this cms in operation that is the meaning doe specifies device they will approve based on the model number uh, all the serial number associated to that equipment including its parts its sensors etc all right and 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 uh, that which has been uh, 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 included uh, as information when we submit them the notification now the second one the law says this is the law daily and half hour average must not exceed the limit more than twice a year this is the tough cooking unless our emission is well below the standard then we have a little contention that we have the confidence that even if we might get spikes once in a while in this case that once in a while shouldn't be more than twice a year so think about it uh, the DOE has uh, the, the data in their office, I believe, and I believe the system is equipped with flagging, okay, an indicator when we have got spike. Uh, I'm not sure whether that is connected to an, an auto compounding machine, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, this particular regulation uh, is not associated to compound of offences so far, unless the minister and the DG would uh, uh, come up with a new stipulation. But as far as the law is concerned, uh, clean air regulations. A contravention of clean air regulations are criminal offence which invites to court case which amount to a judicial process in courts all right so i don't want to talk more about that that is the jurisdiction and the uh, you know uh, choice of uh, and the power of uh, the ministry and the department now let's take a look at this one every half an hour i'm not sure how sensitive the various equipment are some of the equipments do take impulse of detection every 30 seconds some is one minute some is every 15 seconds depending on the type the more frequent the uh, detection or when the circuit is open for measurement then the more harsh uh, would the equipment be working so this depends on the type all right and uh, you got to ask the supplier whether this regular detection and sampling uh, how how long would your uh, sensor be lasting okay can last how many uh, repeated sensing all right so you got to ask the supplier but however the evaluations of a daily mean value is half hour half hourly mean value so for every half an hour and a 24 hour day that half hour average will be sum up with all the other half hours over 24 hours <laughs> and will be divided by uh, 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 48 because there are 48 half hour of one day correct me if i'm wrong my maths is bad okay so that will be the daily mean value and it is also recorded okay all right that is uh, what 
CMS here, uh, the minimum standard required by the law. So these are all, these are all the specification that you have got to inform to your supplier. This is the minimum specification. Okay, now, um, now let's get into this one. This part situation. Look, this is our obligation under this law. If the device fail, which has which has happened more often than not, based on my own observation, okay. We have to notify the DOE in one hour. Look, the DOE has the data live, all right? And we have our competent person looking at this monitor all the time. Don't we think about it? It means somebody has got to be monitoring these emissions from CMS on a continuous basis. I hope we have that because if the device is kaput, we have only one hour to what? To report, to notify DOE, hey DOE, my sensor kaput. Now, in reality, look, do not wait one hour to inform DOE. What we should do is once we detect a spike in our reading or some, or some prominent irregularity in our data, jump into action immediately. Consider that as an environmental response procedure, as an environmental states of emergency that should be in your SOP in CMS operation. Any failure to CMS is in fact an environmental emergency because the spike could be real or the spike could be due to instrument failure. We do not know unless we have gone to investigate. So the moment you get spike, first thing, get to someone to go and inspect the CMS, all right, and rectify the problem. And please bear in mind, the DOE has the data too. So what we do, while we go for inspection, hopefully we can get it done within one hour from the time of the first spike. If you are able to do it shorter than one hour, get a report, simple report and then notify DOE that we have a spike, say 8.45 a.m. this morning, and we have uh, inspected at 9 a.m. and it was found to be a device failure. And do send a report because the spike might repeat just because the device has failed. And remember, not more than twice a year, right, spike? So we don't want to be taking action for the based on the number of spikes. Got it? <laughs> so uh, be smart about it. Make sure you repair it first and, uh, I mean, attend to it first and report to DOE what's wrong. And you've got to tell the authority how long would you take to repair. If the repair requires more than three days, now what happened? Check for the emission. Inform DOE that it's going to take three days. Notify DOE. Then check for the emission. Does it exceed the limit? If it does, is it uh, really an emission problem or is it device problem? If it's a device problem, let DOE know. But if it is a real emission, meaning dust or heavy metals or socks or NOx or carbon monoxide or hydrocarbon or whatever have you for the limit, really exceed the standard. How do you know that? Counter sampling manually. 
if it really exceed the standard with your manual sampling then what we need is that to in to notify doe whether or not you need a contravention license because apparently it is a real emission of uh, air impurities and you are going to do root cause analysis for the source to determine the source of pollution from which process of your production that has caused that spike so this is called a root cause analysis you've got to determine what you need to do uh, what is the cause and you got to report the DOE and while that is being done you got to make a conclusion how long would you take to improve the process technology until you are able to stabilize the emission otherwise the DOE has the power to stop your operation so before that happen I suggest you notify to DOE and probably ask for a contravention license nonetheless it's all the discretion of the DOE they are good listeners if you present them systematically and easy to comprehend got it next one spikes if you have got data that exceeded the limit you have 24 hours to inform DOE do not wait 24 hours while doing nothing you got to do your root cause analysis as I said earlier got it so that's how we do it I hope it is clear you know you're able to differentiate between device failure and real data spike meaning real emission the spike is not due to device failure but the spike is due to emission increase that is serious 24 hours you got to inform doe and not just inform doe hey doe i have uh, dust particulate 200 percent more than the limit full stop thank you no you got to elaborate what are your response plan to rectify the problem make it brief and easy to understand okay you got to inform doe you're doing something to rectify the problem technical mechanism technical explanation okay i hope that is uh, understandable and then we have got to submit evaluation report in three months after the year end this you got to consult doe evaluation on the performance of your monitoring and also the evaluation perhaps on the performance of the equipment itself i'm talking about the performance of the cems you must inform the doe about the performance not only the data or the uh, compliance performance but also you got to inform doe on this equipment's performance two different things so that do you understand what type of uh, equipment have you all right and that would uh, you know be a basis of uh, discussion with doe whether you have certain limitation okay and it's all up to doe it's their abs absolute uh, what they call uh, discretion got it and all the data three years retention time okay that is a bit on regulation 17 uh, pertaining to uh, cms uh, nonetheless uh, since we are here talking about a uh, 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 sampling let, let's talk about analysis uh, we cover another uh, regulation which is called regulation 
23 because it's related to sampling all right so standard method of sampling and analysis of emission the law has stipulated certain regulation so this is concerning who you as the occupier or you as the lab that run the analysis all right and there is a Malaysian standard which is stipulated in this law. What are they? MS 1596. Take a look. You can go to Sirim for that. Also, MS 1723. I think this is more into. Uh, methods of analysis, instrumentation. This is uh, quite. This is rather like ISO seventeen thousand twenty-three. You know, so and also methods stipulated by United States Environmental Protection Agency. Take a look. And also, it could be other standard as desired by the Director General of DOE. All right. So we got to keep ourselves in contact. With the DOE seminars, roadshows, their uh, instruction letters, uh, their portal. I believe they've got portal which is updated from time to time. So take a look. And when and even when the DOE visits your premise, that is uh, an opportunity to have communication with the DOE officers. All right. And ask them. You know, and uh, uh, they might give instruction uh, on your uh, citation book or verbal, but uh, uh, legibly uh, make sure the citation is on the citation field citation notebook, which is actually <laughs> introduced way back in 1995-96 when we taught uh, enforcement technique to a group of enf a new enforcement officers then. They are now directors in states, so uh, there was, uh, uh, you know, I believe the system has gone very well today. Now take a look at this. Uh, these are all is I missed working in the lab. I'm not good. I wasn't good. My hands are not so precise. I was. I remember GCMS. I remember spectrophotometer. And I remember broke, breaking, I, I broke a few instruments, especially vials. Uh, my favorite is still titration. I'm good at titration those days. But anyway, those were lab work. So for all of you are, who are in the lab, all the best to you. Stay safe in the lab because you are dealing with chemicals. Remember, safety first, not environment first. Safety, health, environment safety is always first so ensure that you have PPE while working in the lab doing environmental work and uh, ensure all these equipments are well calibrated and please comply to those international and local standards so that those are standard methods of, of sampling and analysis I believe the liability of sampling the, the liability on the accuracy the accuracy and representativeness of sampling, the chain of custody began from sampling, from equipment, sampling, handling up to analogical report production. And this liability is on the shoulder of chartered chemists in this country. So the chemist is. Uh, registered with IKM, Malaysian Institute of Chemistry. So chemist, all the best to you. And please uh, enlighten us with your remarks, with your comments, with your notes of improvement, with your suggestions in this video. We have a comment column below, no liability. These are all learning platform because I believe in free education. I'm trying to be just one of them who share knowledge. I'm not an educator, all right? I'm not uh, what they call the best trainer or whatever there is. I'm still learning. So you, I need your input to be in the comment. Please do so. And please subscribe and share this video to all your colleagues and friends whom you know are 
affiliated to this regulation. So uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. Do subscribe and share. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, uh, discrepancy. Banyak sangat kekurangan saya. I apologize. Minta maaf kekurangan saya. All right, and uh, and I hope you can uh, top up kekurangan itu by uh, by uh, uh, by writing uh, your recommendation and your newfound information or something that I left out in the comments below, so that other people can benefit, including myself. So thank you very much for your attention. It's been a lovely uh, a meeting, just me and I hope it's you, oh, not just this this laptop. So I uh, end this uh, uh, what they call sharing with uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Have a good day. Uh, stay safe. Uh, let's pray for the uh, uh, COVID vaccine to be around and safe for us. All right. So take care. Have a nice day. See you in the next video.